What's up guys, Michael here. In this video, we're gonna talk about how can you turn liabilities into assets. So the breakaway of this is, first you gotta understand, you must own a business. This is revolving around if you already own a business and you're trying to now find more high-end clients. You're doing pretty well, you're making a decent amount of income that you are currently satisfied with, but you want to splurge. And at the same time, if you're like me, I don't like splurging on really expensive items or gifts or basic necessities where I see as a liability. And I mentioned in a previous video is you can always turn liabilities into assets. For example, if you guys are watching this video, you should be clicking the subscribe button down below and a like button for the YouTube algorithm. But more importantly, if you're wearing something like designer clothes or t-shirts, for example, if whoever recognizes t-shirt right here where I'm wearing, it's a pretty hefty price costing around half a grand. And a lot of people don't know what it is. For example, Tom Brown or you can wear something like Louis Vuitton or Hermes and the list goes on. There's a lot of other designers out there. But here is where I mentioned, this is where you draw the line. Is it considered as a liability or is it considered asset? This really depends on each person. And when I walk around and talk to other people, they will say this is a liability because it doesn't bring or generate revenue. But if you meet around other people who do networking connections, this is technically an asset. And after meeting around with those people, hanging around them to understand their lifestyle, I realized this type of clothing can be turned into assets. For example, if you go to Beverly Hills or you go to Sugarland, Texas, or you go to Allen, Texas, you go to the really high-end restaurants, you go to really high-end hotels, you walk in there. For example, I mentioned in previous videos where you can have to dress for a success, meaning is you got to act like that person, you act like within that category. And you go in there and you network with people. And this houses relate to what I mentioned earlier, for example, owning a business. When you own a business, you should have some like, for example, business cards. If you have business cards, that'd be really nice. Maybe you have a book, maybe a book publisher. And most people will not get to that point. That makes differentiate you from other people. If you have a book, if you have a business card, what you do is you just go around, you hang out in a bar in like a high-end hotel in Beverly Hills. You go around, you talk to a bartender, you chat with them, you buy some drinks, you buy some food, you splurge. And after you finish eating and chatting with them, you hand them your business card. Maybe you hand them your phone number, you build connections. And if you start going there more and more often, you start building those connections. This is something I never realized myself. And when I first walked in there, I felt really out of place. Then I realized how those people build connections to so like Justin Bieber, uh, Taylor Swift, the list goes on, Kanye West, I mean, a lot of people don't like him, but at the same time, is he's still a celebrity. Your whole goal is to build connections. Now, this is where you draw the line. How much clothing, how much you want to splurge after you, you have a successful business that's currently within your standards. Personally, this differs from person to person. I personally suggest between one to two sets of clothing. For example, if you don't want to, you don't like wearing clothing from like Gucci, Versace, Louis Vuitton, Hermes, make you wear something like Laurel Piana, Tom Brown, get like one to two sets. You have a formal one and more casual. And this is where you draw the line, where how often you gotta use it. You don't need like five sets of these clothing. That's like thousands of dollars each. You just need like one or two sets. And when you go to those restaurants, when you go to shopping at high-end malls, you go to those meetings. And when you go to those meetings, you gotta look around for them because they usually don't fall in your hand. If they do fall in your hand, do you have some really good referrals as clients? For example, in my business, I sometimes get referrals, they ask me to go to these meetings, they go and talk in front of a bunch of people. Then of course, I'll bring, like I'll wear some designer clothing and go and meet them there. That is where you change, you can justify spending a couple thousand dollars on clothes because those are now becoming your assets. Instead of liability, you walk in there, you show up that attitude, you give out that air, you give out that feeling when people look at you, they give you that show like, hey, I'm like within this category, I'm in this top level of people. When you compete, you don't compete for the bottom, you compete for number one. That's the whole point of it. If you're dressing like a normal t-shirt or slacks and clothing, then people will look at you and be like, ugh. So that's the whole point between splitting between turning liabilities into assets. Now, for example, here's another really good example. A lot of people say, oh my God, I don't like to buy designer clothes. Okay, how about people who buy cars, really high-end cars, for example, high-end Porsches, high-end Ferraris, Lamborghinis, McLarens, Koenigsegg, Pagani, Bugatti. If you go into that category, then he's like, why own a vehicle like that? Why don't just own something like a Mustang or Camaro? Like versus like why buy a Corvette when you can buy a Mustang Camaro, you have the same horsepower. The problem is it's prestige and 
it, what it gives off. You, when you see a Corvette, when you look at it, when people drive into it, like, wow, you're at that level. If you see someone drive a Mustang, you're like, oh, it's one of those people. It's, whole, it's a perception of people. Like, a lot of people say, don't judge, judge a cover by its book. But unfortunately, in reality in business, a lot of people do judge you by the cover of their book. In this case, what you wear, what you drive. And you don't need a lot of it. For example, if you really like cars, you don't need like one exotic car. If you don't want to manage and maintain all of it, just get like one exotic vehicle. High-end Corvette, Lamborghini, high-end Porsche, Ferrari, McLaren. And use that to go into the events. You use that for your business. So you turn things like those are considered liabilities that don't make money itself. You can turn them into assets. It's like, for example, you have high-end cars. Unfortunately, not most of them appreciate that they don't appreciate, then find a ways to convert it into an asset. So by driving them to events, we drive into events, you walk out in designer clothing, when you walk out in designer clothing, and you go and meet people over there, you hand out your business card, you make connections using your phone number, connect them over your phone, and say, hey, I do this business, this is my business, this is what I do for a business. And when you talk about business, then you ask them questions. For example, hey, what do you do in your business? Hey, how do you, like, how, how do you operate your operations? Like, what's your customers like? Do you have any difficulties? Basically, you ask questions revolving your business and revolving their business too. So if you look around how they operate, it can give you clues and ideas how you might want to change your business. And when you give you clues and ideas, most people will open up to you. When you dress to that level, when they feel comfortable, they will most likely open up to you and give you clues and ideas. And also, the most importantly, they will become your client. And when you become your client, you come in bringing in referrals and their referrals, if they're wearing like basically really high-end clothing or have high-end stores or they have big businesses, just like I mentioned in a previous video, when you want to get rid of all the crappy clients, the ones that basically give you a headache or a hard time, it's not worth the value. And this is the time we can get high-end clients and you can separate the high-end clients to low clients. Because at the end, you rather have like one client that pays you like $100,000 a year versus like 100 to 200 clients and total rack up to $100,000 a year. At the end, you're trading in for efficiency. So when you buy designer clothing, high-end vehicles, really nice houses, and really high-end luxury goods, you don't need a lot of it. All you need is one to two sets, or in this case, a car, one car, one to two sets of clothing, houses, designer, cologne, you only need one. And when you go to those events, you wear those. When you go outside as normal, you don't wear those. You just dress as your average person. You want to blend into the crowd. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys take some insightful understanding what's it like to buy really high in clothing and convert them as a liability to an asset. So click the subscribe button down below. I wish you guys a good day and hey, keep grinding. Always try to improve your business.